welcome you to the culmination of the Du Deutsch Campus Week, the event you have been anxiously waiting for, you know? <laughs> the Oktoberfest Gala. Uh, today we have come here to celebrate German traditions, language and culture. We had an exciting week of learning experience and discussions about a variety of German topics. We made a journey to German history and experienced sorrows of German separation and happiness of reunification through films and the unique GDR poster exhibition entitled To Germany's One People, prepared by advanced German students in cooperation with the George Mason Library Special Collections and Archives. In a speech contest organized by German miners, we discussed of how learning German can enrich one's life and open new perspectives of visiting, studying, or working in Germany, the largest European economy. We also learned why Germans are so advanced in technology. We enjoyed great student presentations, including videos, role plays, fashion shows, and theater performances, some of which we will see tonight. It was a lot of fun playing German board games such as Settler of Catan last night. <laughs> I would like to thank our sponsor, the German Embassy in Washington, D.C., um, that made the series of these events possible on our campus, and in particular, Dr. Ulrich von Schröter, who just arrived, and who is with us tonight. Uh, also, the Department of Modern and Classical Languages and its chair, Professor Julie Christensen, I would like to thank <coughs> Professor Marion Deschmuck, Professor Francine Marx, Professor Stephen Barnes, Justin Grant, Armand Shepherd, German language instructors Kirsten Stetson, Christine van der Lugt, Anja Wright, and Susan Lapke, and of course our great German students, without whom this week would not have been possible. So let's them give a round of applause. <laughs> Thank you very much. And now I will give the floor to Professor Julie Christensen for her introduction. She is chair of the Department of Modern and Classical Languages here at Judge Mason. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm delighted to see all of you here this evening for uh, the uh, end of this uh, wonderful week and to add my thanks to the German Embassy and to uh, to the supporters of this event, to the students, to the instructors, and particularly I would like to thank now, because maybe I won't have a chance later, to thank uh, Dr. Natalia Dudnik, who uh, has spent so much time this week supporting all of you and helping with everything, so I'd like to uh, thank her, first of all, before I say anything else. So. Uh, as all of you uh, probably know, uh, George Mason University is very proud of its global mission uh, and as we are reminded the number one goal at George Mason is to educate the new generation of leaders for the 21st century men and women capable of shaping a global community with vision justice and clarity uh, knowledge of a foreign language is one of the most important ways that we can do this uh, as chair of the Department of Modern and Classical Languages I want to put in a little plug for learning languages um, First of all, I'm always impressed by the students who are learning languages, and I think this week has really shown us the quality of our German students, how well they work, how smart they are, uh, how poised they are to walk out into this new global reality and really succeed. I think it's really a great uh, sign for George Mason, so uh, congratulations to all the students who are minoring in ger German and will continue to support that program. Um, when you study a language, or I would say that the one of the best ways to learn about a country, a culture, and a people is to study their language. Um, and I am always one to remind everyone uh, that language study is not something that happens in a vacuum. Uh, when you're studying a language, you study geography, you study cities, you study leaders, politics, you study food and drink, and you study uh, etiquette. You learn how to speak with people, you learn how to exchange business cards, you learn how to deal with that uh, society, uh, as part of your language instruction. And I think we need to remember that. Um, it was one of uh, Dr. Dudnik's ideas that we should call our classes German language and culture rather than German language. So I know that as you're all studying German uh, language, 
that you are learning a lot about German culture. I would also like to thank those who are native speakers, heritage learners of German, for joining us here this evening. So I'm delightful to be here. I'm very impressed by all the events this week. I love the poster sessions and the other things I got to see. So thank you very much. And I am delighted to introduce Dr. Ulrich von Schroeder, excuse my German, uh, who is a deputy director and counselor of the embassy of the Federal Republic of Germany. Um, he has been at George Mason before uh, when he was supporting uh, the celebration Freedom Without Walls. And he is going to speak about learning German. So welcome and thank you so much. Thank you very much. It is really a pleasure and an honor for me to be here with you, uh, as, as you mentioned, for the second time, because uh, two years ago uh, you participated in the Freedom Without Walks campaign, and that was you know, a really remarkable uh, gala you had, um, about Freedom Without Walls. Now, uh, Dr. Christensen just spoke from my heart, really, when she spoke about learning languages. Um, and. Um, Recently, I have read an article who, which was uh, written by an Israeli linguist called Die Deutsche. Um, and this article said, the world looks different if you look at it through another language. Um, so uh, that was something that, which has really uh, touched me. And um, it goes far beyond the, 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 what you think, you know, when you learn a language, you can travel to another country, you can um, meet other people, uh, they will see it as a sign of respect if you speak, when you speak their language. Um, but it goes beyond that. You, you get a different uh, view of the world. Um, and I can give you some small examples. Um, you can say in some languages things which in others you cannot really um, express. Uh, when, I don't know if who of you speaks Spanish or Portuguese, um, in Spanish and Portuguese, you have two ways to say to be, said and start. And um, uh, it is like if, if you're always, or if you're just for that actual period at the moment. Um, and it is somewhat, sometimes a little difficult in German to express some things uh, which, which Spanish speakers can simply very easily express uh, when they use one of these two verbs. Uh, another example would be, um, uh, for example, in German, we have du and sie. We have two, two ways of addressing people. Uh, and whether uh, we, for example, if we, uh, if we sitzen somebody and we tell him that you can say you to me, uh, in English that makes no sense, in German it does. Uh, and I have heard uh, that in a lot of Asian languages, you do have that even more. You have it in a somewhat very sophisticated way. You have even words or ways of saying when you address somebody, you can see the social uh, the, the position of this, this person. So that means um, that you can have a different structure in a different language, uh, or you can have even words. For example, recently at the embassy, we were speaking of the, of the, of the word Lebensgefühl. Um, we want to sell a Lebensgefühl, like, it's, it's like a feeling of life. And I was asking some of our American colleagues, how do you say Lebensgefühl in English? <laughs> she's an American, actually. She speaks very well German, so a native English speaker. And she said, well, it's kind of a lifestyle. And I said, no, lifestyle is Lebensstil. Um, <laughs> um, Lebensgefühl is more like a feeling, the feeling like that you want to do something or so. We had a hard time to to express this in English. Uh, maybe some of you knows the, what Lebensgefühl is in English, so then I would be really happy to, to learn it. Joie de vivre. <laughs> Joie de vivre. Joie de vivre is Lebensfreude. Sie haben recht. So what you see from that is, um, if you learn a foreign language, then uh, not only will you be, it, it will make the difference when you travel there, for example, um, but also you will get a new look on your own language. You will get a new look at your own society. Um, you can, um, it, it, it's really amazing when you, what, what, what learning the lang languages can, can do for you. Now, of course, 
besides wanting to speak about languages as a, as a total, I also want to speak about the German language. Because the German language, of course, a lot of you speak German, some uh, learn it. Uh, it. It is spoken by 100 million people in Europe, it's the most spoken uh, language in Europe. But most of all, it is certainly a plus in your curriculum when you, in, a, in, in, in times of somewhat, sometimes difficult economic situations where it is um, probably not as easy as it is used to be to get the job you want to, the German language can be the, the plus that gives you the extra qualification which may, may qualify you for the job. I was recently in Cincinnati and I, I have learned that only in the region of Cincinnati alone you have 85 German companies. Um, now, certainly not everybody who, speaks in the, who, who works in that German company does speak German, but if you do speak German, then it is certainly a very good plus to, um, to probably get the, the job you want to. Um, I can tell you my example, for example, I'm a lawyer, but when I was in university I studied Portuguese. Um, and it has really changed my life in the, in the sense that I would certainly not be in the foreign office now uh, had my uh, study Portuguese in university because uh, I later got a uh, something like an internship in Brazil and um, when I joined the foreign service that was the extra plus I had needed. Uh, and I'm referring to Portuguese because it's not a language everybody in Germany learns. Like the first German language of course people in Germany would learn would be English and the second language would probably be French. Um, so, um, it, and, and the same applies for, for, for the US, of course, if you refer to German. Um, many people would say, well, I will learn a foreign language, I will learn Spanish. Uh, others would say, well, I probably I would learn Chinese, or I would learn a language like Arabic. Um, German is normally not mentioned among the first of the languages um, you would study uh, just like Portuguese was not in Germany, but it is probably the like it opens you a niche. Like you are the one who speaks it. You know, you have the uh, the ability to besides some other things which you are able to do. You probably have a German minor and you studied um, something else, and uh, now you say, and besides that, I do speak German. So uh, I want to congratulate on that. If you do, if you don't, then um, I hope the don't yet uh, the, the good examples of all your colleagues here with the beautiful Deutsch T-shirts um, <laughs> will set a good example for you. And I'm really looking forward to see uh, what you have done in this campus event. And uh, I'm more than happy uh, if there will be time to speak afterwards to if, to answer the questions later any of you may have. Thank you very much, and uh, I hope you all enjoyed the evening.